Hey, good morning, Ben. What's dude on the lake? There he is. He's got a uh, couple wash coats of uh, Josonia acrylics on him, and then a coat of uh, amber shellac. So I was looking at him, and uh, as I was working on the face before I finished it, and I thought uh, he needed a little something else to kind of elongate him. So I thought I'd uh, throw a chimney on the, the roof of that birdhouse. And it, it was kind of fun to build. And uh, if you follow along the video long enough, you'll, you'll see uh, how I turn that thing and put bricks in it, which will work real nice for a fairy house or anything. So I, I was impatient and uh, didn't want to wait to let that glue dry. So I, I tacked a couple of uh, brad nails in to hold it on. So here's a, here's a neat tw trick. You got this quick wood. You notice that little tube, you can find that pretty much anywhere and I just cut a piece off. Uh, I use it primarily for setting bird eyes or patching something, that sort of thing, or fixing a crack. Uh, I noticed the other day, I was, you don't, probably don't have them in the rest of the world, but a Menards down here, they had a the regular size tube of that stuff and then they had a foot long tube uh, of that. Now, I don't know why you'd need a foot long no, it's certainly not for what I'm, I'm doing here and I so I just went ahead and purchased a couple of the smaller ones so that I didn't have uh, that foot long tube laying around so you can see I, I kind of contoured the, the roof here and uh, this stuff is supposed to be carvable and paintable it certainly is carvable but it's not uh, quite carvable like wood and then secondary to that, you, you really need to put a couple coats of paint or some gesso or something over that. And I'll, I'll show you, uh, I didn't do it intentionally, but I also didn't put more. I put a couple washes on the roof of paint when that was done. And you can, you'll, you'll be able to see where the coloration is on that. And uh, in this case, it turned, looked to be fine, so I left it alone. Touching up the shape of the roof there just prior to getting ready to do some magic on it I thought about carving the beard in and I thought we'll just go ahead and uh, flare this in so I just did a couple of uh, uh, passes and and did a couple flare marks and I did the same thing on this side so the the flares kind of read uh, back into the face there so time to uh, you can see I penciled in the eyes there putting in the lower part of the lid that's a cuts all taper that I'm using there probably a, a medium or a fine and I'm being real careful to uh, cut out the eyelid and then a, a, a frown line uh, below that. If you've watched the videos before, uh, you're probably subscribed. If you haven't, uh, by all means subscribe so you can see the rest of the videos as they come out and, uh, and certainly go back and, and take a look at some of the older videos uh, on that. You'll notice that uh, uh, when I'm carving I kind of block this thing down. I don't continue with any one particular portion of it until I get the whole thing kind of blocked out. I, I will break that rule on occasion. I will finish a head or get a head pretty close to finished before I, I get down into the body. But this, I've, I've got the basic shapes there and, and now I'm just kind of refining everything from this point forward will be refining this guy. When I film, you'll see a, a slow sequence. There's the eyes getting cut in. I, I kind of did the old Greek thing, just a, 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 a hole in the middle. And upon close inspection, it looks like exactly what it is, a hole in the middle of the eyeball. But as you step back away from that, the light and the shadows play on that and you see that on a lot of Greek statues that they cut the hole or the round portion and up close it looks exactly like a hole 
and you think my god why couldn't that guy do something different and then as you step back further away the light plays across these and uh, makes them look uh, like pupils primarily wood carving uh, is a play of light so each little section is is causing light to fall across that in a different way and especially on this on this beard here the mustache depending upon you can you can see it change a little bit from where the light source is I, I run a big studio light just off to the left side of the chair there uh, looks like you're in a photography studio and that's where the light is coming from I do have some light overhead and a little bit on the right there but primarily my light source is coming from the left side there and you can see the shadows uh, down in there. So wood carving is planes, basically uh, leaving different planes. And, and of course, a knife leaves a crisp plane. Uh, the rotary tools, not so much, unless that's what you're intending to do. So there's how that shadow works out. You can see when I tip that thing down. Uh, <laughs> I didn't spend a whole lot of time uh, working out those uh, eyebrows, but I, I did spend some time undercutting them so that we had a shadow going down over the eye, and it reads as a shadow. That's my older Ultima handpiece. Upcoming here is a Chinese $80 handpiece com or, or, and power supply that I got, and I'll do a review of that. I, I actually tore it apart and it's, it's all laying in pieces on my workbench over there now and I gotta figure out how to put it back together. It's kicking my butt putting the tip back on there, the quick release. But uh, this one's rated at 35,000. I think it's somewhere around that. The blue one, which is the newer version, that uh, 25 years newer than the black one there, is 40,000 and a little more powerful. I run uh, three sixteenths bits in this one this this older one it has had the bearings changed once one time p l enterprises over in minnesota i sent it to him and, and he uh, refurbed the handpiece there was nothing particularly wrong with it at the time i just thought it might be nice to get it sent in for new brushes and new bearings so this thing's about 30 years old that that black handpiece and it, it works just fine Somehow I managed over the years not to nick that cord. If you do any power carving, uh, on occasion you will uh, nick a cord with something and uh, end up patching it. So that's a uh, ruby bit. A fl I call it a flame. Uh, one of my favorites, go-tos. I use those things until they wear out. And then here's a, uh, a ceramic stone that I'm going back and, and really quickly uh, putting in a few lines. I'm not putting in a lot of lines on this thing because I, I want it to be a little more rustic. When I film, I, I either film at, at direct speed or uh, three times typically. Three seems to be the magic number. Anything faster than three times and it starts jerking around quite a bit. But uh, I, I th think that uh, you'll see that on my film technique or editing technique probably is a more appropriate I will uh, run four or five seconds of a particular uh, operation or, or carving portion and then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and set it to three times with a heavy edit for length and that sort of thing uh, once you get an idea of what I'm doing the rest is just to see the uh, where it's going and, and in this case no nothing's changing shape particularly we're just bringing out a few details this guy uh, is for sale uh, I'm tr messing around with putting up my on Etsy account and uh, I know a lot of people Jordy and those guys sell on Facebook haven't quite figured that out yet or messed with the Facebook that's down in the links down there um, but this guy is gonna be for sale uh, for the web so
So if, uh, if you want to preempt that, yeah, you can leave me a comment or you can look at the uh, email address studiooonthelake88 down in the link at gmail.com and uh, I'll, I'll send you some information on him and, and how we can complete the deal. I'll just give you a straight price on, on the character and uh, I'll ship it anywhere in the United States. Heck, I'll, I'll ship it somewhere else, but we're going to have to talk about shipping on that. So I take, took a uh, pencil and uh, the irony of this, I bought this pencil pack and they're all sharpened. What a, what a lazy guy. So there's 10 pencils in there, 10 number two pencils, all of them sharpened. And uh, I don't have to sharpen them. So this is, is going to be bricks. If you're a bricklayer or a roofer, that's the same sport. Um, these things are offset. The bricks are offset. I come back and and uh, and burn those lines in. One of the reasons I do is when I when I come back and carve each of these individual um, bricks out, the, I use a flame, and the the tip of the flame typically rides down in that groove real nicely as, as a kind of a power stop cut. Uh, if you see me do a knife work, I'll use this. Uh, the, the burning portion of the Ultima combo kit or combo, combo carver and burning set that I, I run two of them over on the right side there but uh, they make a nice stop cut for those of you that are familiar with regular chisel and knife work so there's the offset starting to look like bricks immediately it comes alive as bricks think about where that thing goes around the corner uh, how a brick will come out. That's where you can screw up a, some brickwork. And shingle work is kind of the same way. Keep, think about what happens not only on the flat plane, but think about what happens uh, as you come around the corner. I, I am going to put shingles on the roof there for some crazy reason. And then it, uh, one of the ones I'm doing in the future, like I said, this guy's for sale. If you want to buy him, uh, just shoot me a line or leave a comment and we'll go from there. And uh, there are two more of them that I'm doing, and, and one of them I'm going to go ahead and put a tin roof on it and, and show you folks how, how I do that. So you see those all came out. They look like, uh, look like bricks. Now it's time to lay in the, the shingles. And there's no reason to put a straight line across there because this is supposed to be sort of whimsical. If a roofer had done this on your roof, you'd, you'd be kind of twisted, and you and him would be discussing things. But... Uh, on, on something like this, it just reads better if you make it wavy and you don't throw a straight edge against there and try to make those straight. You might have a little trouble working with a chalk line on that, huh? I don't know how you'd hold that one end uh, so you could pick up the center and snap it. You'd have to have a helper. Uh, the helpers I've got around here, the, the dwarves, they're, uh, they're kind of unreliable when it comes to to helping. So first I'll cut I'll cut that, that line in there and that, that's a uh, cuts all there's a cuts all link down below save yourself five percent uh, put the code in uh, I get a little kickback on that for the channel and uh, helps helps uh, pay for some incidentals like bits and that sort of thing. Never gonna get rich off, off of this uh, and it takes forever to, to build up a viewing audience so there, there you see I've got the uh, heck I don't even know what that is I think that's uh, one of the newer uh, ruby bits or and because it, it's cutting pretty nice they tend to wear out and I run them until they start burning but I, I rounded each of those over you notice the front I rounded where the front came around remember I talked about cutting over the edge or coming around a corner and here's an example of, of, of the filming. I showed you a little bit of slow work with that and then went to three times faster. I edit with the, the editing program I use is DaVinci Resolve. It's a standard editor, um, professional editor. And uh, I, I don't know how to use all the stuff on it. But it has a lot of features and uh, so there's there's that 
Now, uh, I don't typically show you the painting, so I did a couple of washes with Josonia paints on the roof. And if you look at the top of that roof there, is, uh, what I'm doing right now is I've got a really uh, used and abused ruby bit in there. And I did do a light wash over his face and the rest of the, the wood there with acrylics. And uh, now I'm just going back and kind of burnishing and polishing that up. So here is uh, uh, kind of my go-to finish. I, I like this for basswood uh, and inside work. It doesn't work good for outside. This is shellac. This is amber shellac. I don't care for the clear. And if I put two or three coats, this one's not going to be shiny. My wife does not care for shiny, so I tend to stay away from it unless it's a cartoony piece. But uh, you can put three or four coats of this on there and get a real nice gloss shine running through that. I don't. This just gets one coat and then I take some steel wool and, uh, and, and rub back and you'll see that as it goes on. So this has got to be a rare tree for you. You guys never see me painting. I like how this darkens up the wood immediately and yet leaves all the, all the features. And so it's painting but it's not. And look what it does to that basswood. It gives that basswood a nice amber uh, tint and gets away from that blonde, blonde look of the wood. The, another benefit to this shellac is it, it dries really quickly. And uh, if for some reason you were to throw this on there and, and think you screwed it all up, uh, you can actually take a cloth wiped with uh, alcohol and take all of this off with exception of what's come down in the pores because uh, this is a classic sealer in addition to a paint. Now I, if you put this on a table or something it, it will show a wax ring or a water water ring. So there he is. He's, he's looking a little dark. He's going to lighten up as he as he dries. You see the glue or the, the, the where I filled in on the top there with that quick wood. If you uh, don't want that to show you're going to have to paint it so keep that in mind when you're doing a piece you can stain it but it takes a lot of patience and a lot of talent so here i am uh, across the eyes across the nose some of the highlighted areas i'm going to go ahead and and this is just double o steel wool i keep a big roll of it in the corner it's kind of my go-to and uh, you'll notice that that burnishes that character it up real nice he's actually dry i could Put a couple more coats on that, make him shiny, but there's no reason to. So that's going to do it for this character. Uh, this is number two. And uh, if you like this guy, go ahead and comment. By all means, if you haven't, subscribe. And uh, if you're interested in, in buying this guy or one of the future ones, just, just let me know. And uh, we'll work out the details. Hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.